Today, in this fork, we are going to focus uh, on a way we can guarantee retrieval from, for users that are storing their data in a decentralized storage network. And in particular, while we're thinking about how we want to solve this problem, we want to solve this problem for any kind of data. So we want to be a web scale. We want to assume that we are dealing with the entire data from the web. And this in particular means that we don't want to have any constriction on of the onboarding uh, throughput of the data for these kind of solutions. Um, this is the, the, the agenda for my talk. And basically the first topic I want to talk very briefly is CryptoNet. CryptoNet is the lab I'm a researcher in a protocol lab, and we are an open distributed research lab. This means that we have a small set of researchers that try to not just uh, we worked on uh, research and primitives, especially cryptographic primitives that are the building blocks for Web3 and, and distributed storage. But in particular, we also uh, try to uh, bring this work to the entire community and influence the entire research community to what we, in the direction we think are, are important for, for Web3. Um, and this, uh, some of the results from this lab are papers, uh, like here you see some of the uh, published paper, there are more on submission from these years. Uh, other, another line of work brings improvement for the Filecoin protocol, uh, many FIPS, uh, the last one for example, Snap Deal or Snark Park, you may have heard of them if you are following Filecoin protocol. Uh, but more in general, we have uh, like a lot of ideas. We open in, we work in the open. So all the ideas that we even are just brainstorm, you can find them in our uh, website in, in our notebook. And uh, the nice thing is that some of the idea, these ideas they manage to become uh, first protocol, protocol design work, and then real product. One of these is. The, the project that I'm going to present today, the data retrievability consortium. Before speaking about data retrievability, I want to uh, spend a bit of time on related problem and concepts like data retrievability in order to build up the, the, the definition of, of data retrievability and understand it better. Uh, so, if you are like following a recent uh, scanning solution for Exarium or in general um, for blockchain, you may hear about data availability. Uh, data availability is uh, a protocol that has two steps, this disperse and retrieval steps. And it's about uh, first you disperse the data in the storage uh, in the in the storage network, um, this means that the, the the owner of the data, the client, will do some processing of the data, pre-processing of the data, and then basically you can think uh, split the data in many blocks and and send this to the network of the storage providers. This is going to be some kind of uh, depends on the protocol, some kind of agreement on the fact that this dispersal was, was done in the correct way so that enough nodes received enough blocks. And if this is, is uh, this step is successful, then we can have later on when it's needed the retrieval step that is giving back the data. So, oops, uh, sorry. Um, what, what we have here is basically uh, a protocol that gives you also retrieval, but only when the disperse uh, as is successful and also he has to assume for the retrieval to, to happen in a successful way that uh, at a fraction, uh, how much depends really on the, the specific protocol, that they know that received the data in the first step are, uh, are honest and willing to serve the data. Um, so this, this protocol, so there are many protocols that are very efficient, that works very well, but they works well with some specific data. Like for example, as I said, they are good for, for roll-up solution because they work well for small data like status, uh, uh, the, roll -up, the, 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 the data that you need for roll-ups because uh, I mean, the, 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 you still have to 
to go to these dispersed uh, steps, first of all, that requires a consensus or some kind of light consensus. So this limits your throughput of data. So you can think about using this for web scale data. Uh, and of course, as I said, the retrievability is not fully covered in the sense that there, it works only if there is an honest uh, provider uh, node in a provider network that is going to, to serve the data. Um, something related uh, to, to proof of data availability is the more general proof of storage. Uh, proof of storage, for example, is the building block of Filecoin. And here you can think you still have two steps. So uh, you have the source step where actually now it's, it's like the client going to many different uh, providers or not in the network and with each one of them is going to uh, create a storage deal to store the data. Then these miners, they're going to use this, this data, the fact the, 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 they have the data to create this proof of storage, okay? Each one of them, they can create their own proof of storage. And the proof of storage then is used to, uh, it, it, it's registered, is 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 a it appears on on a blockchain, for example, Filecoin, and is used to mine to mine the the native coin there, the native token there, and and this gives incentive to these providers to actually keep storing this data. So there is a strong incentive mechanism here that assures this step is done in the correct way. Um, retrievability is again just live as an assumption that there are if you client to store your data with enough providers and there is going to be some of them that are available to serve back the data when you need. So the nice thing of this solution that the incentive economics, first of all, and second gives you unbounded throughput. So this, this client can now really uh, upload any data uh, very fast. Uh, uh, is not is not bounded by any consensus algorithm on the data itself, uh, and and but as I said, the retrievability is again somehow uh, let me say unspecified. So it's just say okay, we there is going to be one provider we need to serve the data. This is our assumption. Okay, so now that we have seen these two uh, problem. I think it's clear that there is uh, some maybe uh, missing point here or like something that we miss. Uh, that is how we can go to the, the retrieve step and make it uh, stronger, not just assuming that there is a, some honest node that is going to serve, but that we can have a strong incentive exactly how like we have for the step one store. So data retrievability is exactly this. We think that we can create, we want to create an incentive system for uh, the, the provider to serve back the data, to retrieve the data. Um, how we can do that? Well, if we can have something like similar to the proof of storage, let's call it proof of delivery, then we can basically do almost the same, uh, uh, same, same scenarios. The real problem is that there is not a proof of delivery. This is like almost a, we can call it, there, is, there are impossibility results in, in the research, this research area that says that uh, um, if you have just a client a provider and they start to complain that uh, I, the client asked the data but the, 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 the provider didn't give it back, uh, it, it, you don't know which one of the two is lying. Unless there is some, other assumption and we need the, the, the assumption that we need someone that we, is a witness of this delivery. So let's let's see a bit better what kind of assumption we, we, we can have. And, and by the way, I didn't say it at the beginning, sorry, but uh, like I'm if there are questions in the middle, feel free to stop me uh, send in the chat or some way and I'm happy to, 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 to stop and answer in the middle if it's more useful. Uh, so let's see some of these, uh, some of the assumptions that we can add to the scenarios client provider to make it uh, uh, data retrievability possible. One first idea that we can have uh, is use the blockchain itself uh, as a witness. That is meaning forces our provider to store everything on chain, the chain sees 
the data and the data are, are then we can retrieve the data from the chain. This is unfortunately too expensive for large data. This can work for very specific uh, small uh, type of data. Um, another idea is using a proof of retrievability. Proof of retrievability is something that is known in the literature um, and it's like an interactive protocol. It's a proof system basically between a prover and a verifier. There is a protocol that they need to, to, to follow. Uh, there are actually many different flavors of, this, of these uh, primitives. And, and the property of this primitive says that at some point, if prover and, and verifier, like client and provider follow this protocol, basically after some repetition of the protocols, uh, the answer that the, the provider is giving to the client that is checking the storage of the supervisor will leak the entire data. The problem of this solution is that, again, as the same as before, we need too many it's not, it's not efficient because we need really many interactions. So it's going to be a retrievability that is very slow and through time. It's not one shot, say, retrievability. Um, so what we, we, we tried to, to, to come up was like uh, some easy uh, way to have a witness, an oracle of the retrieval exchange. Why, uh, why that having this oracle that is with that is a witness of the of the exchange works because uh, say that you have your client uh, doing the, the the deals with many providers but then no one of them is actually answering the retrieval query from this uh, provider if we have an oracle the client can appeal can ask to the oracle to uh, basically repeat this uh, retrieval request to the, all the providers or one in particular, okay? And this oracle is kind of trusted to answer what he really is going to see, the answer that is really going to see from the provider. Um, and if the provider is in this case not going to answer, since we trust him, we know that the client is the honest one and his, his claim about I'm not getting my data back is, is a is a correct, is a truthful one. And we can do some action. For example, we can punish, we can do some, apply some penalties with the provider. If the provider is going instead uh, to give back the data to the Oracle, we are at the same way because this, at this point, we can just assume that the Oracle is going to uh, send back to the client the data. So in this way, we basically construct the weight or where the data are given back to the, the to the client or the provider is going to be slashed. So we can some guarantees like uh, uh, we can say, hey, provider are going to to uh, send back the data to do the retrieval survey in the correct way because they don't want to be slashed. Um, so the question now is, how do we implement this uh, nice guy, the Oracle? We don't want to have a, clearly a centralized party to do this. So what we did, we create basically a, a solution that has a small trusted set of parties that we call the referees. This is what we call the, uh, this is our solution is the data retrievability consortium and is based on having this referee committee. So you can think of this about the network of uh, special nodes called the referees. It can be, doesn't have to be very large size, can be small, like 20, 25 nodes is enough. We don't have to trust all of them. We need to trust a fraction of them. For example, in our prototype, we assume we trust uh, half of them. Um, and now the protocol goes like this, and uh, basically client provider, they will agree of chain, they can do a retrievability deal. Retrievability me deal means that they agree on the duration of so for how long their contract is, is valid, some payment for this service from the client to the provider, and some collateral. So the provider is going to lock down some collateral that will guarantee the retrieval, okay? And it's actually the one that we are going to take from the provider if it doesn't do that. Uh, so if the client is satisfied with the retrieval service, nothing happens. If the client doesn't 
get a request to the service for a, uh, for a deal for a data that he has a deal on, he can appeal to this small nectar of referees. And this nectar will basically just they will do what I just explained before with the Oracle. They try to retrieve the file with the provider. If they succeed, okay, fine, they forward the file to the client. If they don't, they are able to take the collateral that was locked down and basically uh, burn it or like just, just remove it from the balance of the provider. So this is the high level. What is really important is how or at least we spend a lot of time to optimize how the real, uh, the trial, so the, 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 what happens after the appeal uh, from the referee, by the referees, how this is done. Because first of all, we want to guarantee that, you know, even if some of the referees are somehow are malicious and they collude maybe with the malicious clients, with providers not slashed, we want to guarantee that if some referees are not online, provided that doesn't get slashed, the good ones. So we have to think, and also we want to be efficient. We don't want to like uh, just go all 20 referees, go and ask the file and the provider to answer to all of them. This kind of situation, we, we, want to, uh, we wanted to avoid those. Uh, so after some, some research, we, we can up, come up with the protocol that has actu actually rounds. In each round, only one of the referee has to uh, ask the file back. So the provider has to answer only one referee. And then the referee is, is responsible to convince the others that the correct file was, uh, was obtained. Uh, and uh, we actually need like uh, several referees to say, okay, this provider is really bad. And then only after some of them, like uh, say if, again a fraction, one third of them that really agreed, then we really uh, slash the the provider. So we have all these like security uh, measurement in, in place. And what I want to say is that uh, we have uh, a, we, in April we managed to have a small prototype of this that is implemented basically by a smart contract uh, that is live on, on an Ethereum testnet. Um, thanks to the smart contract, there is the smart contract and then three only for this prototype referees uh, that are simulated by, 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 by us basically. In, in some of our by our code in some of our machines, and the, the smart contract uh, is can be used to create the deal, the retrievability deal that is going to be posted on chain, and can manage the deals, can do the slashing, so withdraw the funds from the funds from the the provider. Um, you can play with the with the the prototype. Uh, with this uh, client UE demo that we have at PLDR.dev. Um, if, you, if you go to this website and you connect your MetaMask wallet, you can play, uh, I see, create a deal and manage your deals. Uh, after that, after the test of the prototype, now we are working for uh, shipping uh, a real test product. So, and the plan is to ship something uh, at the end of October, so end of this year. Uh, we have some intermediate milestones. So the, the first one is to actually have the product ready. Uh, I'll say a bit more about it now, what we mean by going from prototype to product. And the second one intermediate uh, milestone is actually to uh, find and board partners and uh, find the right product market fit. So if you think you can be a partner for this, like provider, or especially you want to be a referee, please contact us as soon as possible because we are super interested uh, in, in this kind of collaboration. Um, going from prototype to product means that we want to make this more usable and, and more, more flexible. For example, we are working on adding uh, NFT uh, collections for showing the deals. So if you are a provider, you are doing deals, you are, all these deals will appear in a specific NFT collection. So it's going to be very easy for you to show that you have many deals active and to manage your deals. 
you can even create a market of these deals later on. Uh, we are working on adding an admin, uh, admin function to the contract to change the parameters that uh, we are putting there. We are working on a reputation score based on how good you are in uh, doing this retrievability as, as a provider. And we are working on, for example, um, working, uh, having the idea not just for one specific file, but for a collection, let's say a folder of files. Um, all these are features that we think are important to really make this uh, something that we can use in, in a real storage uh, scenario. And we also have some planning about uh, documentation and, and, and a website. Um, and that's, that's it. Uh, thank you a lot for information, for your attention. Uh, any, any question, I'm very happy to answer. I want to uh, thank all the team. Um, this is not my project, it's a CryptoNet project, and I work on this with Luca and Nicola. Um, but I also want to thank uh, Kuba, Alex, and Nicola for, for the feedback. And the implementation is uh, done by Yomi Digital, and we have uh, Jonathan from Code uh, helping for PM. And also, thank a lot for the crypto economic team for all the review, the crypto economic review part, and especially to, to Danilo.